This is first of all the normal um, pulmonary outflow tract, right ventricular outflow tract, and you see we've removed the leaflets of the pulmonary valve. So you've seen this already earlier in the course. And the point is that between these points of attachment, as the points of attachment run up to the sinotubular junction, which is the ridge here at the top of the sinus, between the pulmonary trunk and each of the sinuses, as the point of attachment runs up, to that point, then we have these triangles formed here between the leaflets. So these are the interleaflet triangles. Um, and there you can see another one there. And as we said at the beginning of the course, the tops of these triangles actually lead directly outside the heart um, into the pericardial space. So the pulmonary valve is the easier one to understand. We have um, a, a uniform arrangement around the entirety of the ventricular arterial junction. As you saw in the aortic uh, position, we've then got a region of fibrous continuity between one of the leaflets and the aortic leaflet of the mitral valve. So what's happening in um, stenosis then? Well, let's look at, uh, first of all, pulmonary stenosis. And we're looking above the valve here. We're looking down on this pulmonary trunk, through this pulmonary trunk, onto the valve our leaflets. And you see the pulmonary trunk is actually fairly thin-walled. It is a bit um, dilated and a bit baggy. So... Um, there was perhaps quite a bit of post-stenotic dilatation in this case. And then if you look down on this uh, valve, we've cut across it at this point, so that's a, an artificial um, cut there. But if I close it down, you'll see that it's very similar to the case I showed you with an imperforate valve and pulmonary atresia, uh, an intact septum, pulmonary atresia intact septum, um, except that in this instance, we've just got a pinhole within the middle uh, of this valve at uh, tissue. So it really takes the form of a volcano and you can see that it's attached uh, to the wall really at uh, these three points with the sinuses sitting in between those points of attachment. And as we said, it's paradoxical that in the setting then of stenosis, the valve then falls down and the line of attachment of the valve is really in almost one plane and is at the level of the junction between the pulmonary trunk, or the arterial trunk, and the ventricular mass. So we have um, a much more annular attachment of the valve than we see in the normal heart. And really, it's quite hard to point out the remnants of the interleaflet triangles, but you can just see one here, uh, a little dimple there, um, which marks the remnant of that interleaflet triangle. But you see it's virtually disappeared. And that um, remnant, that little dimple, is corresponds to the position of the raphe on the other side of the, uh, the valvar um, plate, as you see here. Now, on this side, there's very little in the way of an interleaflet triangle, uh, but below that raphe, and uh, below this one, there's perhaps, again, very little in the way of an interleaflet triangle. So we really have very much an annular attachment of this uh, pulmonary valve creating this dome-shaped uh, structure. And you can see there's marked hypertrophy of the, uh, the, the free wall just there. So very similar uh, situation in the aortic position. You've seen um, the specimens already, but you've seen the normal specimen. Here you can see, again, we've got this crown-like attachment, and uh, we've got interleaflet triangles, which again lead outside the heart. But there's this region of fibrous continuity between the mitral valve and the aortic valve, and in stenosis, it's this interleaflet triangle here which is the one that remains open. And presumably, as we're saying, this is to do with the different structure here in this region of the aortic root. So usually it's these two interleaflet triangles that disappear um, and this one that remains open, creating an eccentric uh, orifice. So let me just show you an example with a slightly thickened aortic valve and also... Uh, fusion of the leaflets. So we're looking at the aortic valve from above. It's a quite a small aortic root, as you'll see. Uh, here's the pulmonary trunk. And if we look at the leaflets themselves, you see they're slightly thickened, as I say, and dysplastic. And there's a raphe here attaching the leaflets to the wall uh, of the aorta, just there, and another one just there. So there's complete fusion between this leaflet and this one, and this leaflet and this one here. And the only remaining interleaflet triangle, as you'll see, just um, as I turn the, the heart around and you're looking from the side of the valve now, is the one that's directly above 
the aortic leaflet of the mitral valve. So I spread the valve open and show you from the underside, you'll see what we mean by the more annular attachment. The valve is quite lumpy and the lumps are on the uh, ventricular side of the valve or leaflet and that's frequently the case, um, or always the case in my experience. And here you can see the remnants of the interleaflet triangle. So one there, one here, and then this is the remaining opened uh, interleaflet triangle. But even this one is a lot narrower than in the normal situation. So change in the attachment of the valvar leaflets, the way they hinge from the, uh, the junction, as we say, they change to a more annular form. And then in the aortic position, we end up with this eccentrically placed keyhole uh, orifice uh, with the opening directed towards the mitral valve. 